Maria Karakousis was about to celebrate her 50th birthday when she discovered a lump on her rib cage, diagnosed with stage four melanoma, which is usually fatal. Cancer had spread to many of her organs. Maria took part in immunotherapy drug trial at the Melanoma Research Institute in Sydney. And three years on, she's clear of cancer. To discuss her journey, Maria Karakousis joins us along with Associate Professor Georgina Long from the Melanoma Research Institute. The Institute is leading the world in the treatment of melanoma, which is more prevalent in Australia than anywhere else. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Maria, let's start with your incredible journey because obviously three years ago, uh, your world changed uh, significantly. You had this melanoma, uh, the prognosis was not good. No. But here you are today. Tell yeah. us what happened. Well, actually, as it was, it was a story that started three years ago today. And uh, my husband and I were living in Queensland and I discovered a small lump on my rib cage. And as most people do, they sort of leave things a little bit because I didn't think it was altogether that serious at that stage. Um, though I went to a GP finally um, and had it checked out and they went through all the procedures that you normally do and um, I finally had it biopsied and it came back with um, um, melanoma. And so at that stage in my mind, I was still not particularly worried because I thought, oh, well, I'll probably cut it out and I'll be on my way sort of thing. So this is sometimes we don't treat these things a serious, you know, it is a serious thing yeah. and um, I think a lot of people out there don't realise how serious it is. So from there on in I did more tests where they found uh, that I had cancer in the organs as well which were in the lungs, the liver, the pelvic area and um, so it was all very quick from there in. It's, it's one of those things where you have to make very quick decisions fast. We, we were living in Queensland so we decided to make contact with doctors in, in Sydney and uh, they referred us on to the Melanoma Institute Australia and that's where I met Georgina Long and um, many other doctors and what I did was a few tests and um, it came up that I had a mutated gene which meant that I could actually go on this drug trial. Um, well maybe we should get Georgina to explain yeah. that drug trial. So um, first of all just in melanoma now we rarely use chemotherapy, occasionally we do but we use immune therapies and targeted therapies and this particular trial that uh, Maria went on was aimed at an abnormal gene in the melanoma, not in her, not in something she'll hand on to her children but actually in the melanoma. So it's a tablet drug called a BRAF inhibitor. The particular one that Maria went on was Vemorafenib. And what it does is goes to the Achilles heel of the melanoma cancer cell and stops it in its track from dividing and, and she had a marvellous response. So by targeting the melanoma, <coughs> you can also affect the other cancers that link to it. So when, when Maria said it, it, she had other cancers in the organ, she meant melanoma, mm -hmm. right. the melanoma cancer which is a melanoma is a cancer. Yeah. Melanoma had spread to her liver, right, right. Okay. to her lung, to her pelvis. And so when she went on this tablet, it targeted all those spots and shrank it right down. I mean, M Marie was very sick. She saw one of my colleagues at Melanoma Institute Australia, Dr. Gaminsky, and she was, you were unable to walk upstairs, you yeah. were breathless. I mean, can you give us an idea of how yeah. sick? Mm. Uh, yeah, pretty uh, sick. I'd lost quite a lot of weight. Um, very, very tired to the point where, um, like you say, I couldn't walk upstairs, I was very breathless and um, even, and it seems to progress, it's, it's like it seems to get to a certain stage and then it really kicks off and it seems to progress very quickly and I mean over the week you'll notice yourself coming down quite fast and um, so it's quite you know, food. God, it must have been terrifying to, see, um, to, feel, it, to feel sick in that type of time. Yeah, it's quite, quite fast actually, and which is what's so surprising about it, I think. And and, and the drugs work incredibly, incredibly quickly. quickly too. Right. Yeah, in the same response, incredible. So as quickly as you become sick, uh, Marie was feeling is uh, very quickly feeling very well and has hasn't looked back. Mm -hmm. Georgina, we're just seeing some vision of the Melanoma Institute here. Can you just tell us more broadly about the work you're doing in some of those trials, and in particular a recent breakthrough, essentially doing a trial on 
uh, you're saying that, that half the cases of serious melanoma will develop into brain cancer. So, so just with Maria, where the melanoma went to the liver, to the lung, about when people are first diagnosed, as when Maria was three years ago, about a quarter of them, it'll go to the brain as well. So it'll be melanoma in the brain as well. And then about 50 to 70% of patients with stage four, like Maria, or metastatic melanoma, will develop melanoma in the brain during the course of their illness. But if we can stop it in the tr its tracks, we won't see that. So the other big development is immunotherapy, particularly drugs that target this thing called PD-1, PDL one And we have many clinical trials now because Maria is doing fantastically, some people don't, and we need to make sure that everybody does as well as Maria has done. So we have a trial of some of the new immunotherapies, a PD-1 antibody combined with another immunotherapy um, in people where it has metastasized or spread to the brain. Maria, did you know much about melanoma? Because I have to say, I always thought that I, I didn't realise that, you know, melanoma was a specific cancer that could spread elsewhere. I thought it was almost, you know, people talk about getting a melanoma or, you know, a, a skin spot. Like, yeah. did you know much about the I, actual disease? I think it's a, kind of a human failing, to be honest. Um, we often are, are told things and, and, and the serious of, seriousness of them. And, um, and even when I did know about melanoma, because I actually, in my 30s, did have a melanoma removed from my back. And I still was quite cautious, um, you know, using my sunscreens, hats when I was outside and so forth. Um, so I think it's just one of those things. You just got to, you know, you've got to persevere with things. Um, you've got to look after yourself when you're out in the sun, because you just, you just don't know. You really don't know. And, um, well, I mean, it's all been about an education message that obviously the, the current younger generation seem to be heeding, but to Georgina, do you feel as though that education is working? We are seeing fewer cases? Well, what's the trend at the moment? So that's a really good question. If you look around the world, particularly in developed countries, the Western world, uh, the incidence of melanoma is increasing, mainly because the recreational sun exposure in most of those countries is high, uh, even in childhood, which is, we think, the precious time. Um, but in Australia, because of the sun sense message, we're seeing that the incidence is increasing, but not as quickly. So there's a bit of a plateau, and we will see in the next decade how we go. But the SunSense message really started in the 80s and 90s, so we're not going to see the knock-on effect of that for probably another few years, but we are seeing a slowing in the incidence. Yeah. And just, it, sorry, go on. No, I was just quite curious, is it just sun that's causing it? Like no, there's, it's your, there are complicated genetic risk factors. Of course, if you're from, the, from an Anglo-Saxon or Celtic background, so the Northern European, the Irish, the Scottish, the UK background, we're so fair. Mm. And so uh, we have, a, th that a background has a risk. higher risk. Yeah. Just quickly, obviously prevention is the key, but you feel as though a cure is, is far away? I do. I, I think, and I'm hoping that in my lifetime, I see more people like Maria. Mm. At the moment, we think we might be getting around 20 to 25%. I, that's just soft figures there. But I really hope in my lifetime we do see a cure. But better still, um, so Maria had a melanoma in her 30s and then it came back. And that's what melanoma can do in about 15% of people. What I'd like to do is now take these drugs to an earlier stage. You know, when you're in your 30s, when you first get it, or even prevent it completely, can we give a course of drugs to prevent it from ever spreading? But I think there is a message of hope, but it doesn't take away the message, check yourself, get your partner to check yourself. Anything that's changing, it doesn't have to look like a mole. Anything that's changing rapidly, you must get it checked out. Georgina Long and uh, Maria Karakousis. Thanks so Thank much. You very Thank much. you. Thank you.